Guys, we got to combine some topics here, okay? We got to combine a co-main with a main event. Of course, I'm talking about this Saturday. Let's start with DraftKings. This is even money. I'm talking about Piera. I'm talking about Izzy. And guys, don't forget this is a rematch. The last match that both of them had was this match against each other. It's the same weight class. Doing the same thing. The venue's different. They're going to be in Miami. Last time they were in New York. But I bring that to you because Izzy was a two and a half, two and a half to one favorite at DraftKings. And everybody was armed with the fact that these two had met up twice before and they both went Piera's way. And as beautiful as Izzy's record is, Piera was getting a run of his own. I mean, they both cleaned out sides of the bracket. Everybody understood this and still had it two to one favoring. Adesanya. Now, who do you think the favorite is at DraftKings right now? Who do you think? Don't look it up. Who do you think is the Adesanya? Is he having lost twice going into their last match, but now having lost three times, two by finish going into the fourth match, you still think he's going to win? I just think that's interesting. Now, they're damn near even money. It's like a plus 140 to, to, to a minus 120. The way that I speak, that's just, that is as close to even as there is. It does fall on the side of Adesanya being the favorite, but it, it looks as though you guys think we got a much closer match here, much more competitive. You can see a path to victory for Alex Piera. Okay. One thing that must happen, it must, and it could be done by anybody, but the clock is ticking. Okay, this is this has to be done. Is Adesanya and Piera are going to settle their dispute here? A lifetime of dispute. Four different competitions, taking this guy's money, taking this guy's opportunity, going back and forth at each other, two different sports, one weight class, same path, but it all gets settled here. Whether you think that's fair or not. And by example, if Izzy wins, there's some people that are going to say, well, he, owe, he owes him three matches. He owes him a rematch. If Izzy's going to win, we have to agree that we settled the dispute here, period. It would be foolish for Piera to make the claim. I think it would be, I mean, Dana's almost got to. Booking rematches and putting guys out there with one another. I mean, it's, it's one of these spots. And Piera, I apologize, and Adesanya's got to know it. I mean, he's got to make this perfectly clear. There's no other opportunities. The only thing that didn't get Volkanovsky over the hump in his fight with Islam is that he didn't have to win. Volk did not have to win. Regardless of the outcome of that match with Islam, Volk wakes up tomorrow world champion. That's a problem. Regardless of the outcomes, Volk's next match gets participation points on the back end. It's a main event. And you just got to understand that. He should have walked away from the 45-pound belt. I'm not telling you that that's what I would have done, by the way. I know that there's a real discussion there and there's a career. I'm, ju I'm just sharing with you. The senator does not get elected president unless... He resigns the senatorship. It, it's got to make it clear. This is what I'm going to do. And not moreover, this is what I believe I'm going to win. And I'll show that by giving this job up. And somewhere, Adesanya must put himself just in the frame of mind that this is it. That is my suggestion and that is my belief. And as I speak to you about that, and I look at the line at DraftKings, I come across an interview with George Masvidal. Now, Masvidal is going to be taken on Burns, but there's a lot on Masvidal here. Masvidal is the BMF champion. Masvidal is a multiple-time contender for the world championship. And by the way, the guy that was stopping him from getting it is no longer there. I mean, Masvidal's path is similar to Colby's. In that regard, it's very similar where you think a guy can't return to a world title fight because, because he can't take on a, a certain guy that's not there anymore. I mean, there's some opportunity that has opened up. Masvidal is fighting in Miami. Big deal. Proud Cuban descent. He's from Miami. That's who he represents. When you talk to Masvidal, that's what he talks about. He believes that's his town. 
And even if Gilbert Burns is living right up the road, the heat is still on Masvidal. And it's a very difficult match. Masvidal said, I'm going to punch him in the face. And when I get tired of punching him in the face, I'm going to punch him in the face some more. And when he expects me to punch him in the face, I'm going to punch him some more. When he doesn't expect me to punch him in the face, you, want, you guys want to guess? You want to guess what he's going to do next? He's going to punch him in the face. Okay. But in the same minute, and Masvidal said he gets tired and he breaks. You put pressure on him, he will quit talking about Burns. But you want to know, you want to know what else Masvidal said? Masvidal said, if I don't beat him, I'm done. And he used a, a slightly different word. It was, it was along the lines, if I don't beat him, I'm pretty much done. It's still a very powerful way to speak. I think it's appropriate. And I also think he's right. Masvidal is a contender, for sure. If he's not getting through Burns, who is not even in talks to get a title fight, probably should be, but he's not in talks to get a title fight. That's looking at Blahal, that's looking at Colby Covington, just by example. Where's Kamara Usman going to land? Then I would understand the point that Masvidal's making. Where do you want to go on the card, right? I mean, a year ago, Masvidal was the sport's second biggest draw. He's still up there somewhere. He's still very high, particularly in the absence of Nate Diaz. George might still be the number two guy. He's not the main event in his home, hometown. Can't get around it. He just can't get around it. You want to know where you stack up? You want to know where your importance is? You want to know how much you're getting counted on? It's your card placement. Not your ranking, not even your purse. So. I don't say that to give Masvidal a hard time. I say that to compliment him. I believe that he's being very aware. He's 38 years old. He's fighting at home. That Everything's on the line. Thinks he should be in there for the world championship. Is planning to be. He's planning that he's going to go and train and Colby's going to pull out and he's going to be the one to step in there with, with Leon. That's a very solid plan, by the way. That kind of stuff happens all the time. And for the guy that's ready and the guy that's looking at him, just sharing with you, but he's got to get through Burns. And he's admitting if he doesn't, it's a problem. But one thing that will help him to get through Burns is understanding that if he doesn't, it could be the end of the line. Being very aware of that, stating that. Burning his ships, no options, nowhere to go. It's a very compelling stance by Masvidal. I don't know that that's going to change your opinion, or now you think he's even more likely to win the fight. But I will tell you what, as I look at DraftKings specifically, and I look at the main event with Adesanya and Pierre, which we've seen three times, we're getting ready to see a fourth. You guys who have parted with your hard-earned money, fighters say things, promoters say things, other fighters say things. When other fighters make a prediction, all that is, if I ask you between A and B, you're a fighter, and ask you between A and B, who's going to win? All you do when you answer that is tell me who you like more between A and B. Who you have more of a relationship with A and B. You cannot get a fighter to give you a fair and straight analysis. It's never happened. It won't, you can't get a commentator who used to be a fighter to give you a straight analysis. It's never happened. It is a popularity vote. But you want to know who doesn't lie. You want to know who doesn't get it wrong. You want to know who does not just say things. You guys. Not when you go into DraftKings, not when you part with your money, not when you push that button. You are genuinely and sincerely showing a belief in your prediction. And you guys have it damn near even money. I will just tell you, as the days are ticking down, if Adesanya grabs that microphone, he goes on to Twitter and he types it out. If he puts it into the universe, it will change things. He's got to say it, but once he says it, it will change things. It will change his mindset. It will change his approach. And I'll tell you right now, it will change the line at DraftKings.